And the big red button is pushed. I can't believe it's another Friday. Happy Friday. Happy Pi Day Friday. Happy drama. <laughs> and all those other adjectives that we can throw at it and labels. Hey, good afternoon, everybody. I am Dave Rush. I am the senior instructor at Total Seminars, and it is Friday today is if we you know what I've I always debated whether or not we should announce the dates in these things, you know, just in case somebody ever watched it without a title, but it always has the title. And so uh it is December 10th. We are a third of the way through December. Christmas coming up in two weeks, right? Holy Hannah. <clears throat> Excuse me, clearing my throat. Man, I have been running around like a madman this morning. I I got back here. Uh, at 1.30, gives me 30 minutes to finish prep. Obviously, I knew it was all coming, so I had a lot of pre-prep done. But as I got back and I started in my checklist, because, uh, you know, I'm an old pilot and I live and die on checklists, it's like, oh, wait, I haven't done anything from the 1 o'clock to now. So I just, but everything has happened. It's happened on schedule. And we are here to talk about everything, anything technical. Sounds good. So let me do uh, a little update on my own notes here. Let's put that near the camera so it kind of looks like I'm looking right at you. <laughs> I know, but then my eyes go down, right? I got my, my head facing the right direction and the eyes are down there. I, I, it would be really awesome if they could build a, a monitor with a camera right in the middle of it so you can look at your monitor, you know, kind of like a teleprompter, which I have upstairs. But I'm, <laughs> I'm not the teleprompter type. Anyway. So this is drama. Dave Rush, ask me anything. I am Dave Rush. I'm the senior instructor at Total Seminars. We get together every Friday at two o'clock central time to talk about all things technical. Our bailiwick is CompTIA certifications, ITF plus, A plus, Network plus, Security plus, any of the other pluses that uh, I can speak with some alacrity on. We'll see. Uh, and of course, our real focus here is it's Pi Day Friday. We use Raspberry Pis to further our studies in both CompTIA and general technology and Linux and computing and things like that. So uh, we get together for a couple hours. Thank you. Back channel. And I'll talk about the back channel in just a moment. We get together for a couple hours every Friday and uh, shoot the breeze for an hour or so, do a a project for half hour, 45 minutes, and then shoot the breeze. And oh yeah, I know the reason you're really here, right? Because we got a giveaway. We're giving away yet another CompTIA test voucher for any test that CompTIA offers, except CYSA plus or whatever their rationale is. Uh, but uh, that's coming up later in the show. We got a lot of good stuff. Uh, I will be joined by my usual partner in Pi in a little bit. He had to reschedule a, a lesson that he takes. He uh, He's an accomplished musician, particularly in, in stringed instruments. Uh, however, one of them is kind of kicking his tail a little bit. And so he signed up for some specific uh, lessons on that particular instrument. And because of the holiday season and whatever the other reasons are, uh, they've shuffled that lesson to a little different time and so scott's finishing that lesson he uh, said he should be here in about a half an hour but scott jernigan is the uh, editor-in-chief at total seminars and author and co-author and musician and uh, i was at his house today on my way down to the airport to pick up the kid from the airport and he puts together a spectacular uh Christmas display every year. I didn't take any pictures of it. There wasn't going to be time to share. He'll want to do that anyways, but uh, wait till you see what he's got coming up. It's good, good stuff. Our other partner in Pi these days, Andrew Hutz, working the back channel. He got in early today to help me out. Uh, many thanks. Andrew is a longtime uh, denizen. Ooh, I like that word of the unofficial Total Seminars Discord channel and Mike Myers AMA channels and the drama channels and has joined our organization as a, a writer or editor or uh, something working closely with Scott that involves pens and pencils and ink quills and things like that. So he's working the back channel, helping me out, pointing out uh, things that I need to talk about, doing research for us, managing the band hammer. He is a moderator on here. So uh, if you want to uh, send a message to Scott, you can just send one to at Scott in the chat channel 
Uh, likewise for Andrew, just use the at sign and start typing in Andrew and you'll see his name pop up. Same for anybody else in here. You can chat amongst each other. And I did some experimenting on that. Uh, it's not just the at sign that works. You can also use the pound sign as if that really matters, but it does. Okay, so what are we doing here today? We're here to advance technical learning while isolated during the coronavirus. This is the 70th episode in our series of weekly dramas to show how to use Raspberry Pis in our studies and real world creations. This is a presentation of total seminars under the aegis of Mike Myers, our president and senior author and many other hats that he likes to wear. And with, uh, I offer my, my fondest gratitude to Mike for uh, letting us have this time to get together to talk about these kinds of things every week on Friday or so. By the way, I will be here next week on Friday. I have not yet made decisions about the following two Fridays of the year. I want to get together with Mike, see what he's doing, and then uh, we'll sync up our, our programs and see where that all goes. But I will be here a week from today. I will be on vacation. I've been, it'll be a, a semi-working vacation, a staycation to be sure. But Monday is my last day of official work for Total Seminars uh, for the rest of the year. I, I banked up some vacation time and i am got to use it. But I will be here for you and in all the usual places. All right. Oh, one other thing before I get started on uh, Q&A. Uh, I took a little time this week, one evening when I was uh, writing up today's stuff, and uh, I have a lot of things that I'm going to show you on slides and pictures and things like that. And I said, you know, Mike, when Mike puts up a, a, an image or something like that, it's the image. You don't see the frame of uh, Adobe or a photo viewer or anything like that. And there must be a way. He uses a different utility than I do. So uh, I thought I'd do a little poking around. I have achieved full video uh, slide viewers of things. Uh, and it looks good. The problem is it's cumbersome. So it's going to take me a few extra clicks and a few extra seconds to get everything up and ready. But the uh, the slides and the the assets and things like that should look a lot better starting now and then over time I will get more skilled at how to bring them up more quickly and it, it won't be such a, a cumbersome process. All right, well let's see who's joined the party. Oh goodness. <laughs> Lots of people already. Thanks for everybody. Siegfried in at the very beginning, uh, <laughs> way before the, the very beginning. Let me read that back channel message. So when I get there, trips from the video says December. Is, okay, there's okay. I see. Uh, I'll get that fixed. Uh, thanks for pointing out the uh, the typo on that. I just made that uh, last night at you know one o'clock in the morning when eyes are blurry and fuzzy. But I'll get that fixed and it'll look right in the archives after today. Thanks, guys. All right, back to Siegfried who poked in at one thirty seven my time, forty three minutes whatever, 33 minutes, something like that, 23. <laughs> Math is not my strong suit today, but I do like your description, uh, Siegfried, bite-sized computers, that's cool. Good morning, Tullowit at 53. I'm using the uh, timestamps on here to track this. Oh, that was quick, thank you, Andrew. Uh, we have specials every week. I'll talk about them in a moment, but Andrew has just posted this week's specials, uh, discounts on uh, bundled products at 2.08 my time, eight minutes past show hour. So we'll get into those things. Five by five. You know what? Everybody says five by five because for some sick and twisted reason, that's the term that they used in Alien. Is that the first one? No, Aliens. That's the second one. Uh, we're in the pipe. Five by five. Spunkmeyer. Spunkmeyer. Five by five is not the answer. It's five by nine. Uh, in fact, back the, I, I'm going to do this to you, right? I'm an old ham, so I'm going <laughs> to suffer. Uh, when you're using Morse code, especially back in the day when it wasn't reliable transmitters and they were horrible receivers, and we wanted to get uh, an assessment of how our signal was being heard, we'd ask for a signal report. Uh, and the answer is three parts. Best numbers are five, nine, and nine, and it's readability, signal strength, and tone. So five, best readability. One is garbled. You get the idea. Signal strength between one and nine and tone. How does your Morse code sound? Is it scratchy? And <laughs> or is it lovely one kilohertz audio tones that ease up and ease down? So 
Five by nine is the communications. But thank you. TD Washington, formerly alibied, formerly alibied. Welcome back. Nice to see you. Avanet, Avanet. City of Shark is here. A number of uh, voucher winners poking in. And Tullowitz starts the communication with the back channel. Okay, describing that. Yes, thanks for the fix on that or for the, the heads up. I will get that fixed. End message. <laughs> Somebody I was back channeling on or, or using our, our back channel communication with uh, another co worker in the company the other day. And the co worker threw a word out. Uh, and they, in fact, the word was out. And that just, cut me to the core because while I'm not the type who has to have the last word uh, in a conversation, I had more things to say on this. However, in radio, over and out is, isn't legit. Over means I heard you and I'm turning over communications back to you to respond. But out means don't respond. This is the end of communication. So this coworker sent out and they know what it means. They're, they're familiar with using it in, in nautical sessions and it hurt me and I had to respond anyways I'm sorry I know you said out but I had more stuff so <laughs> Roger Wilco by the way as long as we're doing radio speak military radio speak aviation uh, Roger Roger exists because we used to send back in Morse code just the letter R did not it uh, to mean received and then when we switched to voice back in the 30s and <laughs> the 20s, uh, then we would say the word Roger when we received something. So it was just a, the American phonetic for R instead of Romeo, the international phonetic. And then uh, Wilco, of course, will comply. I received your message and I will comply with what I heard. Roger Wilco. That's a legit thing. Andre de Goyard is here. Good. Fill in your time of the day, everybody. <laughs> There's a variable in a lot of programming language called percent greeting time that fills that in automatically for you, morning, afternoon, or evening. Michael Lovell is here. They have transparent TVs. So why not put a camera behind that? Interesting. I wouldn't want a TV as my monitor. They don't have enough... Uh, refresh rate and a frame rate but something to look into <clears throat> move this here yeah i can get you a little bit yeah that's a bad thing it's got to stay here all right who else is here michael level also says at time 203 i do have a question excuse me there we go do you have an easy way of remembering what encryptions are symmetrical versus asymmetrical? No, I don't. So what I did, uh, because this question comes up to me all the time on the forums that I moderate, is I created a document and I will gladly share that with you. Um, can't do that here, but if you will send me an email, I will send you this document. So here we go. The first Okay, now I'm going to try something that I hadn't thought about trying before. We'll see if this works. It's going to look like my normal uh presentation at first, but bear with me. Okay, holding breath, control L. Now nah, it doesn't work. I'll do it on Oh, wait a minute. Hey, it is doing something. <laughs> I hit control L twice. So probably whatever it did, it undid. Hey, look at that. That looks right. So anybody wants to contact myself or Scott or Andrew, you can do that. Uh, we use our first name and our last initial and we work at Total Seminars. So our uh, URL is totalsem.com. So send me an email, davar at totalsem.com. And uh, I will send you that document. You can also, anybody wants to talk to me, uh, catch me on my personal email. Don't do both. They're, they're interlinked in a black hole forms whenever they start talking to each other. Uh, catch me on Steam is Blood Rush TX. And I expect to do more steaming this post-Christmas season. When Scott J turns up, Scott Jernigan, you'll find him Scott J at Total Sam. He uh, steams as Scarhart and Andrew work in the back channel and the front channel. I've seen him on the front. 
Uh, Andrew H, because he's Andrew Hutz at Total Sim. And on Steam, he is The Green Abyss. All right, let's see what happens if I try and get out of this thing. <clears throat> All right, so let me know how that turned, how that looked, because uh, I didn't test that other than looking at it on my own monitor. So uh, I should have filled the whole screen and, and showed everything. Okay, so, so Michael Lovell, send me a message. I will send you a document. JM is here. Thank you, back channel. Th thank you, Andrew. I don't tack with calling you guys back channel unless you say don't. That was Andrew. Thank you. JM, would you recommend getting a CCNA certification first before going for CompTIA pen test? As a pen tester, should I be very familiar with how Cisco devices work? Um, no. Mike and I have talked about this with you in the past. Our recommendation is not to get a pile of certifications uh, and then try to find a job that fits them. Okay, we want you to find a job or, or find a job that you love and that requires a particular certification. Now, that doesn't answer your question on point, so I'll do that, but I'm, I'm a little concerned about your approach to this. This is not the ideal approach. It's not uh, totally useless. It, it does work for some people sometimes, but it is not the ideal approach. So CCNA before going for pen test? No. Uh, I think if you have the network plus skills or the networking side of CCNA, that's what you need uh, as a foundation for pen test plus. I know lots and lots and lots of people, some of whom are here right now and will probably chime in that said, uh, I didn't get a CCNA, I did net plus, or uh, maybe I got CCNA, but I didn't care about the Cisco stuff uh, and I didn't need it to study pen test plus. So you don't need uh, Cisco expertise in order to study and pass pen test plus. That's a good word. You are a denizen. Very good. Thank you. <laughs> what are you doing, Andre? Test. <laughs> it's what's funny is it may or may not work, but the way it appears on screen is they're all ats. So that's interesting. Never considered that. All right. I super scrolled. Yeah, not too far. All right. We're in, we're in good shape on time. Andrew, remember what he said about the banhammer, Andre. <laughs> I think you've been subtly threatened. Follow it at 205. I'm planning on digging holes in my front yard and having zombies in Santa hats pop up choreographed to the tune of Carol of the Bells. I more than support that. If I were in paradise with you, I'd be digging with you. How deep can you dig before you get past topsoil and you start hitting? the foundations of paradise. Hello, everybody. Abu Bakr al Hajj is here, my friend. Nice to see you, sir. <laughs> Trollner. <laughs> Reading messages, passing 208. OK, so Andrew posted the specials. Uh, let me throw up my specials as well, because I can do that. Uh, weekly special. OK. So it looks like it has to be done this way when you're playing with Zoom. Oh, you know what? Let's go nuts. I'm going to try something here. Put up special like that, then alt tab to Zoom. And then share. So like I said, this is cumbersome for a little bit for a while. I apologize, but we'll get there. All right. So we got specials this week. 50% off ebook and total tester bundles. We have those bundles for A, Net, Sec, CYSA, Pen Test, and AWS Systems Architecture Associate. Yeah, I think that's right. Uh, the code, go to totalsem.com. And I'm not sure if we have them packaged as a bundle or if you have to pick up the A ebook and then the A total tester bundle or A total tester. And then when you check out, you use the code RECORD, R-E-C-O-R-D. And that stuff's good through this Sunday night, my time, midnight, whatever that is. All right, let's see what happens, how I got to get out of here. So that's posted at 208, Andrew, uh, Andre, one more time. Andrew posted that in the chat feed at 208. TC is here, creating ethernet cables hurts my fingers. 
Yeah, you got to crimp really hard, man. I can see why that might hurt. <laughs> I've amused myself. I do love to do that. All right, and let's read the rest of the question. Creating Ethernet cables hurts my fingers. Doesn't help. This is my first time, and I suck at it. Um, if you don't already have one, TC, you need a crimp tool. <laughs> and you should not find yourself in a tremendous amount of finger pain. Uh, yeah, finger pain. Uh, crimp tools come in all kinds of flavors. You can buy cheapies at uh, uh, Northern Tool or uh, what's that? What's the competitor to that? They have an orange store, whatever it is. Won't come to me. Uh, but they got cheapy little uh, crimp tools for five to, to 10 bucks. You can go up and, and get the best ones they make. Uh, a company called Paladin makes those. Uh, if you're going to do it more than a, a few times, if you're going to do this as a profession, get a crimp tool that ratchets. Okay, You don't want one where you go halfway down, my hand's tired, I undo, and then I squeeze again. You want it so that you squeeze, it's ratcheting. And so if you do want to give your hand a break, you let your hand go, and the ratchet is still holding where you left off. Everybody sucks at it at first, by the way. Same for punch downs. Steady as shark. That was actually really interesting. Hey, that's what I'm here for. Oh, yeah. So Tall would ask if you're making cat fives or six. Uh, the answer is six. Yeah, of course, you're going to do 568B. That's, that's the standard right now. The only time we do A's is if you're making a crossover cable. You do B on one side and A on the other. Or if you're working in, in a legacy installation and they've got A, so you stick with the old standard, but B is what you use today. And yeah, sixes and sevens are a little more challenging than fives and five E's and everything previous to that. Reading messages here, passing 215. Andre said 214. Andre says to Michael Lavelle, if you use the same key for encrypting and decrypting, it's symmetrical. Yeah, uh, I think Andre, he might have been asking a different question. And that is, uh, for instance, is blowfish symmetric or asymmetric? Is uh, I'm just not I am not as good at Mike as, as pulling these out of my hat. So, but the names of the various uh, blocks and symmetrics. So that's one of the things that you have to do for uh, sec plus is know which ones are block and which ones are stream, which ones are symmetric and which ones are asymmetric. Tell what's talking to TC. I'm gonna pass that by. Jeremy Parker is here. What are your thoughts on hardware encryption keys to authentication? I think they're great. Um, with the, the, the one caveat, like anything, have you ever lost your keys? <laughs> so uh, I have worked in companies where we had to carry around uh, hardware RSA tokens. Uh, I am sure that there have been times that I have misplaced them. I, I don't think I've ever lost one, but I certainly know of coworkers who has. And some places that's no big deal. And some places it's a very big deal because they've got to invalidate that one in case somebody gets hold of the lost one. And yuck. Uh, Andrew. <laughs> okay, Andrew and Andre are emailing back and forth. Tell the way, you can't dig far in many places. Yeah, you hit coral, and I always wondered about that. I, I will get there one of these days, and I'll visit you. Esteban Schaefer is here. Greetings, my friend. I've, I've seen you here. Good to see you back. Yeah, right. Uh, tell the right at 219. Practice makes perfect. Uh, I do a, a stand-up class for the government and uh, we start out on day one where everybody starts making cables and doing push downs and they all suck and i fix some they don't all suck but uh it, it, it's time consuming and uh, it requires sometimes some intervention by the end of the week they're just slapping away and good simple stuff reading questions my global don't worry you can just buy ethernet pre-made <laughs> i stopped at a store today because I wanted to buy a pre-made cable instead of make one. Uh, it's an audio cable and it's no big deal to make them, but it's sure what it's, I, I would have paid good money to buy one instead of to go through the hassle of making one. I need a one or two foot 
high power speaker cable, quarter inch to quarter inch. I can't use a, a mic cable or an instrument cable. I need something that can carry a massive amount of power. But my the mixer is actually built into or, or mounted into the back of the speaker. And I got to go from the mixer to that speaker. And then there's another one that I can do a long run on. And it just makes so much more sense to do a nice little short run instead of the the 25 footer that I've got looping down and then looping and then coming right back up. Ugh. So I went to the store and they laughed. We don't <laughs> two feet make it. Yeah, yeah. So I did. 221, Andre. I bought one of those crimpers when you put the cable all the way through the RJ45. It cuts off the excess right. Uh, and then of course they make those RJ45s where you can push in the uh, unshielded twisted pair cables so that they actually come out the end and uh, you can nip those off. Uh, they're kind of cool. They do make it easy to do alignments. It's better over time, sure. Okay, well, I'm caught up on questions then. Let's go see what's back in Yon Notes. How are we doing here? 26 past the hour. That's a good place and time to be. Uh, Andre, if you would, uh, Andrew, if you would throw up the, uh, don't throw up, uh, but put up the uh, the Discord link. That would be great. Whilst I go look at, I don't know what I'm looking at here. That's weird. Okay, there we go. All right, so we did deals. You got ahead of me on that. That was a good save. We got a project today. Uh, we're going to be working with static IP addresses in Linux. And of course, you can do static IP address in any flavor of Linux. However, uh, the method that we're going to use today is, of course, going to be done on Thank you. Uh, Discord invitation link for the uh, unofficial Total Seminars Discord channel is uh, Andrew just posted at 226. I'll talk about that when I get there. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, so we're going to do a static IP addressing on Raspberry Pi running Raspberry Pi OS, which is a Debian distro. And so this will work on all Debian distros, but not other distros do it and use the same files in the same way. So if you want to try this on other systems, Ubuntu, De straight Debian, lots of other distros out there are based on Debian and it'll work. I do have my uh, archive notes server up. It's, uh, you can throw that up as well. Andrew, sorry, I, I get Andre's face and, and your face, and I want to call you each other's name. Apologize for that. Uh, what am I looking for here? Distro. Oh, man, that's going to be fun. You're going to like that one. When I get that far, friends, tutorial, unofficial. There we go. The unofficial Discord channel. Uh, the link that Andrew's about to put up may be different than this one because different people, for some reason, do sometimes get different links. But let me put this up for you. Well, that wasn't what I wanted to do. Okay. And that was definitely not what I want to do. Goodness gracious. I told you this is going to be cumbersome while I learn it. I apologize. All right. That's the right place. And now we do share on here. And off we go. So there is an unofficial Total Seminars Discord channel. We don't own it. We don't operate it. We just participate on it like everybody else. Our friend Jose Braden set it up. And if you would like to join us, and we would like you to join us, please. We have over 500 members on the server now. I think 510, 520 last time I looked, something like that. Uh, join us. We get together uh, with mics and cameras after the uh, AMAs and drama. We're on there all the time. Lots of people are 24 hours a day. I leave my computer running 24 hours a day. And if somebody sends me a message there with at whatever name I'm using there, uh, it, it'll wonk at me and I'll answer you right away. So. Uh, join us on Discord, please, especially after the show today. We've got all, they've got all kinds of uh, cool forums and sub forums. There's Raspberry Pi forums and there's Linux forums and there's Kali and there's CompTIA study forums and, 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 and. It's a really, really great place to hang out. Jose has taken it from himself as the sole member and then two or three other people joined and now 500 people. And it's, we're, it's less than a year old. I think it's 10 months old. So he's really, uh, done a heck of a job when you consider that most of the uh, the grounds that he fishes are from the AMAs and drama. 
All right, that's not what I was doing. I was reading these. Okay, so a little bit where we've been, where we're going. Last week, we explored uh, basic crontab commands, uh, and we did so by creating a digital fireplace and then set up some crontab commands so that the fireplace will make sure nothing is running at at four o'clock in the afternoon. And then at 401, it runs the footage for the digital fire. And then at midnight, it switches that out to a still image of a, an empty fireplace. At least that's what I did in my case. And then turns that off after a certain amount of time. It's kind of cool. There's a lot more that can be done with CronTab. I just wanted to introduce you to some basics. Because we're not trying to become Linux gurus here. We want enough to get through current and upcoming, potentially speaking, certification objectives. And to kind of wet your whistle, it says, oh, okay, CronTab is cool. And Dave says there's more cool things we'll do with it. I'll go off and do research or I'll ask Dave uh, in an email or on the chat forum or on the Discord channel, whatever. Communicate me with me, all kinds. What are we doing today? So this question has come up a number of times and it kind of finally dawned on me that every time it comes up, I do a basic answer and I say, we'll get into that sometime in the future. Well, it's the future. Uh, so I wanna talk about today, uh, a couple of methods that you can use to set static IP addresses in a Raspberry Pi and the whys and the heretofores and so forth. Andrew, if you haven't already, please post up the, uh, the pi r square link and i'll put that up here because i started to say this voucher contest unofficial friends distro huh okay i didn't make a slide for it there we go link is posted at 31 1431 thank you so as most of you know who are here but if, if you're watching this uh later on the archive you may not know this uh Every document that I use to create these weekly shows, uh, I save and put them in a zip file and put them up on a server, which I turn on typically a day before through a day after drama. And you can download every single one of those from every episode that's had a project in it. So if you want to just read the steps of the project uh, or follow them along without watching the, the show, and we do encourage you to watch the show, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, you can download those. Uh, you'll find us at... Uh, pi r square, p i r s q u a r e, pi r square dot zapto, z a p t o dot org. And you'll find a download link on that first page. And then it'll take you to a chronological listing of all of the uh, shows that we've done. I will get that organized uh, over my vacation time so that uh, instead of one for every week, I'll at least, you know, kind of organize them into months. So there's not so much stuff that you have to scroll down. All right, only 33. Let me do my news of the news and tricks and techniques of the day. And then we'll go back and answer more questions. I am building a pie. <laughs> I am always building a pie, as you know. However, uh, I have collected some goodies and I am building the ultimate pie. Pretty close to ultimate, it's not quite. So I just thought I'd give you a heads up on a, a, a foundation that I'm going to work on and then we'll find something cool to do with it. Uh, that's, that's so backward, right? That's like getting certificates. Now find a job that matches the certificates, but eh, sometimes you do that. Uh, so I've taken a, a Pi 4B that I got that's got eight gigs of RAM, uh, putting an ice tower cooler in it. I got a 512 gig micro SD, which is really silly. I don't need that. I should be booting and using uh, an external USB device like a flash drive or an SSD or something like that. Oh, oh yeah. And I do, because I also picked up uh, at a, a very good price, uh, a 256 gig, 240 gig uh, M.2 drive and a housing for it. So let me share my Black Friday shopping with you. All right, this one I tried, I remember this. And it had an issue if I try and do first. So stand by, share screen, do this share. And now let's see if I can go full screen on it. 
okay, that looks like it's full screen. So there's my 512 gig micro SD card. I never heard of these people. My guess is this thing is slower than molasses, but again, price was right. I thought everybody ought to have a 512 gig micro SD card. So I do. And then I got a Kingston 240. This is a, a SATA drive because I'm going to go through USB. There's no value when going through USB in getting, <clears throat> excuse me, at least going through USB 3 on, uh, it's 3.0 or 3.1 on a Raspberry Pi. So no value in getting a PCIe NVMe based one. SATA works just fine. And then here is the housing for it. So that's going to be my build. Now I can close that one all together. Free up some memory. I freed up some, oh, don't close that. <laughs> I almost closed Zoom. <laughs> I had something interesting to say, but that scared me so much. I totally lost my thought process. Other news of the week. I paid a penalty this week for being fastidious. Nothing good happens to early adopters other than the fact that they can raise their hand and say, yeah, I did that when it first came out or before it first came out because I got a evaluation copy or whatever. So as you know, uh, three weeks ago or so, Raspberry Pi OS upgraded to the new core distro. It went, it went from Buster to Bullseye. And a couple days after I, I watched and listened and I didn't see or hear anything bad happen. So I upgraded all my pies to bullseye took about a day not bad <laughs> and then i got bit one there's a problem with using official pi cameras in certain instances and i have one of those instances so i've been on the forums and, and talked with raspberry pi folks and they're they're working on it and they they're, they do have one workaround now in fact they have two workarounds but I'm not happy with it. I want to, I want something a little bit more official, but then the other one, I love my pie hole, man. I love pie hole between it and uh, the brave browser. I don't get ads. I, I don't get ads. People uh, grape all the time that they use pie hole, but they still get ads on YouTube. And that's true. Pie hole can't stop ads on YouTube. However, brave does. And every place that buy uh, pie hole doesn't stop an ad brave does so i don't get ads and that's and that's all i run eh, no i also have two, uh, origin and uh ublock origin and and the other origin one but i don't know that i actually need them i could probably turn them off and they work great nonetheless uh my pie hole has been running for just shy of two years i updated and upgraded uh whenever they come out and i upgraded the, the pie hole when uh, bullseye came out and it continued to work absolutely beautifully. In fact, I didn't even look at it. And then two days ago, I went to look at it. Some Somebody posted a question on the, one of the pie hole forums. And I thought, well, I want to take a look at my machine and see what that looks like. Uh, and I went on and my dashboard had three colorful boxes with no values in them. And I didn't associate that with the bullseye upgrade at the time. So I poked and dug and didn't have any luck. And I sent a message to uh, one of the pie hole engineers uh, with my theory of what I screwed up. And he, we back and forth for a little while, a couple hours, I'll send him this file and he'll send me that file. And uh, then he said, well, here's your problem. Here's a, a log entry that says, uh, here's what's broken, but it doesn't say why it's broken. And that was when I realized, oh, the bullseye update and so then we had some directions to try to fix it and the direction didn't work. And he said he'd had uh, similar issues on about half of his upgrades and half of them seemed to go perfectly. But the answer was, oh, I had to smoke my pie hole and rebuild it. And it was no big deal. It took a grand total of a, 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 an hour. And I did it when nobody was around and, and I, I didn't lose any functionality because everything that I look up I already had open, but uh, I can't say anymore that my pie hole has been running for two years. Now it's been running for two days. So, yeah, 
you get bit. I got bit for being an early adopter. Fine. Cost me an hour worth of life. I'll live with it. So is there a lesson from that? Sure. The lesson is knock yourself out, upgrade anything you want, recognize that you may lose it. So do backups first. And in the case of pie hole, if you do, if you can't fix it, take you an hour to recreate it. And that hour is the, the darn slow installation and excuse me, update of bullseye. It's very slow compared to, excuse me, hiccups. Here we go. Very slow compared to Buster. Okay, two other things in my little newsy stuff. You want to have some fun. <laughs> uh, I have never done this. Lots of people do this. Maybe you already do this as well. But go to kickstart.com kickstarter and look up Raspberry Pi or Raspberry Pi Pico and look at all the cool things that are in development and kickstarting for Raspberry Pi. And of course, you know, there's a million other products. If you're into photography or uh, into sewing or whatever you've got, musicianship. There's a billion Kickstarter projects out there, but I was, I just had a fun couple hours one evening dragging through that and even found something that uh, I immediately said, I'm back in this. I want two of these. So cool, cool stuff. One more. You want to have some fun. This one I'm going to show you. Uh, distrotest.com. If if you want to experiment with a version of Linux, but you don't want to install it wholesale on a computer, you don't want to install it in a, uh, a virtual machine, you can run probably the version you're interested in in a window from this site. So let me bring this up real quick and share it with you. Yeah, there it is. This one I'm not going to... Uh, Try and do the big screen because I haven't tested this. Hey, Musician Master is in the back channel. So if you've been looking to talk to Scott, he's here. Start sending. All right, I'm sharing here. So I need this. Share. Click this. So this is distrotest.com. They have 1,200 versions of Linux that you can play with here. And when you click on one, it's going to tell you uh, on there what the account names that are available are. It's usually root and user and what the passwords are for them. Remember, passwords are case sensitive. Uh, and it should open up another window. And that window will be a VNC screen into your distro. It'll boot up uh, an actual running copy of it that you're VNCing into. By default, it'll run for 30 minutes. But you can go back to the launch screen and change that, add it, add it in increments of 15 minutes. It is just a ton of fun. I tried a handful of distros. There are a couple of distros that I know of that aren't on here, but big deal. For instance, Red Hat Enterprise Linux isn't on here. That's okay. Fedora is on here and CentOS is on here, and they're the same. So a lot, a lot, a lot of good stuff there. I encourage you to check that out. Got to find my document. There it is. All right. That should finish that stuff up. The resource archive is available. We're doing a CompTIA voucher giveaway in a little bit. I don't have any old unanswered questions. I'll do, uh, I'll go back to questions and comments for a little while. I got about 15 more minutes of that or less. It's super scold while I was looking. Here we go. Okay. I'm at 225 now. <clears throat> Sipping iced tea and reading questions. Okay, so Andrew posted uh, 226, the unofficial Discord link. I will be on Discord after the show today. I uh, don't know if Scott or Mike will be, but there's always a chance. But join us. If you don't have a mic and, and or camera, that's okay. Join us on text. We'll talk to you. But it gets, it's an opportunity if you do have, uh, well, even if you join us, no matter how you join us, that we can get into your questions to a little more depth. We can ask you more questions, get fill in information, help figure things out. There's a, a really good question going on there. Maybe you've got some insight under this thing. Uh, one of the board members uh, is working on replacing a motherboard and you pop the motherboard upside down and there's some very interesting dark marks on there. And uh, people are kind of trying to suss out what that might have come from. Maybe you can help on that. 
no swish swash it is not only mike who does giveaways i do voucher giveaways as well i don't do total tester giveaways at this time uh, i don't think it's because mike would say no i bet if i called him and said hey can i do he'd say yeah i just my show it already runs two hours uh, adding another contest in there isn't necessary <clears throat> awesome linux yes Hello, it's talking to other people. Pi R Square server is posted at 227 to get my downloaded documents. Yeah, 1200. I need every one of them. Me too. <laughs> Mike's Mike and camera. Yes, Michael. There's a reading questions. I'm trying to future proof my tattoos. <laughs> get an rtx 3090 sure they're all over the place find them in piles and in, in the bins in the retail stores i think i saw one over at target the other day like a level i got lazy and didn't make a pie hole yet my ads are 90 percent beach towel funny because i'm in new york and <laughs> 10 percent spider-man <laughs> sick of spider-man ads uh, i want to remove the one on television from the insurance company that's buttoned themselves up with spider-man Ugh. Don't push two products at me at once. I want to flip away. However, that commercial is hilarious. Spider-Man got his powers by with spider bite. I, insurance salesman or whatever he is, will do that. <laughs> That's a funny commercial. All right. Scott's in at 242. Poston. Dave gives away a CompTIA voucher. Swish, wash, swoosh, wash. I love that name. Muhammad El Abayad is here saying hi to Scott. Tough. Hi to you too, man. I'll say hi. And I'll see if we can make it on Discord. And for how long if I do, I might be heading into town to help empty out a warehouse office full of cool stuff being donated and given away. Very nice. Doug. <laughs> okay. Back to uh, my notes here. Uh, back channel, if you guys would put the, uh, the three friend of show plugs up. I'm going to do that right quick. <clears throat> Uh, we're doing Bearded, Andrews, and Tullowitz. I don't think I had the, the other one up there. And I'll bring that up as a slide. So we've got friends here on the show who also have shows of their own that they would be very pleased if you would join. All right, we'll do this. I'm going to do this smooth, not fast, but smooth. Share this one. Share. All right. So Andrew Hutz has a blog that he writes about security topics. It's very easy to read. It's very easy to understand. And he is a good writer. Thank you, uh, Andrew. Uh, these links are also posted in the uh, back channel, so you don't have to memorize them. But if you're watching this in the archive and you can't see them in the back channel, just do a pause on this screen and type things in manually. Oh, I do have all four on here. Oh, well. Uh, Tolowitz got a channel. He shows slices of life in Hawaii on YouTube. Uh, Elbow, we haven't seen him in a while, but he has a, a blog that he does on YouTube where he uh, evaluates inexpensive hardware and software. And Bearded IT Dad, he's kind of joined us uh, lately on Mike's show. Uh, he offers insights on how to grow your career in the IT field. He's been doing it for some years now and uh, has some good thoughts. Hey, all right, I'm making it smooth. Got to take care of all this nonsense, elbow. All right, yeah, that takes me to the project then. So let me get the last of the questions and then we'll get fired up on the project for today. <clears throat> Beg your pardon. Just one T at the end of Tullowit. Okay, so I got <laughs> Tullowit's is my, my fixer today for typos and spelling. I will fix both of those things. Sorry about that. Yeah, three areas. I got to have it here and in. That. That's my fault. I, I, I give that information to the back channel in the morning and then they just copy paste it. So Andrew didn't create a typo. I did. Emu, Emu and Doug. Okay, okay. All right, gotcha. <laughs> of course, bearded. You're uh, you're in a feisty mood today, Andre de Goyert. <laughs> I've seen several references to Dutch beer today. 
Uh, Andrew Hutt says at 248, and I'm working on a small security tools web app that I'm going to connect to the blog too. Cool. Looking forward to that. Swish Swoosh, has the competition already been done because I'm joined 30 minutes in? No, I usually do my competition at the end of the project or if the project is running long just before the end of the show. So you have not missed it yet. Now you're going to make me go check something just to, I, I don't have uh, everybody's name, uh, every winner memorized. So I'm just going to plan ahead in case you might win today. Let me make sure. Swish. Okay, no, you have not won a voucher yet. So you're good to go. What is today? 12, 10. All right. That takes me back where I need to be. <laughs> Thanks for the nice fix, Scott. <laughs> we just got to make sure that Andrew DeGoyer keeps it clean. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he did get just a tad toward the, the edge the other day, but he was fine. Uh, we got to make sure. By the way, uh, if you do join us on the uh, Discord channel, uh, we maintain a, a, a high level of decorum on Mike's AMAs and my dramas. Uh, things are a little more, since Scott and Mike used the term the other day, indecorous on uh, the Discord channel. I, you know, it's not saltier, it's not racier, but it's a little less formal. How's that? <laughs> I don't have a drinking problem. Of course not. I can drink. I do it all the time. <laughs> all right. Well, good. It's uh, 10 till. Let's get started on the project. And then we, uh, it's not going to be that long. I've got a couple of cool things to, to talk about, uh, all associated with setting up Raspberry Pi static IP addresses, uh, when and why, and, and what's the alternative. Uh, we'll finish this thing up in half hour, 40 minutes, something like that. Do the contest and then uh, close out with uh, answering any more questions that pop up. So a static IP address, right? You're in your home right now, except for the, the, the deepest end techno weenies uh, like myself and probably like Scott and a couple of the other folks. Uh, you have a, a DHCP server in your Soho router, probably. A DHCP server is a server that has a pool of IP addresses and by default, your Windows computer, most Linux computers, when they wake up, they just do a call out in the blind that says, hey, is there a DHCP server? I need an IP address. And the DHCP server looks at your MAC address, or the, the MAC address of whatever machine called that out, checks to see if there's an IP address in the pool. And if so, he's, he calls back, yes, I'm a DHCP server, and I will be happy to offer you the following IP address. And your machine says, yeah, that'd be great. I'll take it. And his machine, the, the DHCP server responds with something that is the equivalent of, okay, it's yours. And bam, now an IP address is assigned to your computer. How long is that IP address going to be assigned? Well, that will depend on the settings that you have in the DHCP server. That length is called the least time. Some uh, DHCP servers in Soho routers have a default lease time of one day. Some have it as long as a week. You never know. So what happens is, let's say you just got it an hour ago and it's good for a day and you reboot your computer. Well, when you reboot it, it doesn't remember its old IP address. So he calls out and says, hey, is there a DHCP server out there? And the DHCP server looks at your MAC address and says, ah, I gave you one earlier and the lease period is still valid. So I'm going to give you that same one. So you always get to keep your same one from call to call until the lease period expires. Now, let's say it's tomorrow. You booted your machine. You shut down your machine overnight. The next day you come back up, you make the call to the DHCP server and he notes your MAC address. And he says, oh, uh, this guy doesn't have one because that lease period last time uh, it must have expired. He doesn't even remember that, of course. But he says, nope, there's not one in here because your lease period expired. So he reaches into the pool and picks maybe the same one, but maybe somebody else got that one. So maybe it's a different one. And you get a new one for the next 24 hours or week or whatever it may be. That's DHCP in a nutshell. Two other things that we need to know about it. One, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, its pool of IP addresses is called its scope. 
a DHCP server has a scope, which means this pile of IP addresses. We'll get back to that. We just want to learn the tech, uh, terminology for a moment. And the other thing is it doesn't necessarily just hand out IP addresses. It can also hand out other information, such as a subnet mask, such as one or more preferred DNS servers, and some others such as, oh, a default gateway, and some other goodies. So we can use that information and make our machines fully functional. We can use some of it and use some of our own. That's where it's going to get really fun. Who cares? Well, of course you do, and here's why. If you are working at your desktop machine, and that machine is never anything more than a desktop, you word process on it, you browse the internet on it, you edit videos on it, you don't have any servers on it, then you don't care what your IP address is. You don't care if it changes from day to day or hour to hour. Clients that are 100% clients work absolutely fine with DHCP addresses. However, if you've got a server running on yours, various systems are going to access it by its IP address. And so I can't have a web server change IP addresses every day. I can't have an email server change IP address every day. Now there's workarounds to that. We can use DNS and we can use some other tools, but those are workarounds. They're not solutions. The solution is to give it an IP address that will never change until or unless you purposefully manually make some kind of a change and deal with the aftermath, the, the places that have referred to your old one so they'll know how to deal with the new one. And so that is a static IP address. Now I borrowed a tutorial. Uh, I don't know if I put this uh, in the in the back channel links, guys. But if I did, uh, please post that on the chat. Uh, I borrowed a tutorial from a, a site called makeuseof.com. I've got a slide for it here. Tutorial site, there we go. And I'm just, for the sake of speed, I'm not going to make this a, the big full screen thing. I'm just going to share it with you right quick. So a lot of what I'm going to do here, as far as the step-by-steps, can be found in there, but I've also got a lot more that I've added for my own purposes uh, and for your educational benefit. But makeuseof.com, whack Raspberry Pi, set static IP separated by dashes, uh, if you want to go follow this. And of course, I've got all the step-by-steps in my download document archive. You can get that from pyrsquare.zapto.org. Okay, so what's my motivation? My motivation on the practical side is so that a server or a, a regular old host, a, a client type host, has a consistent, persistent IP address. The second motivation is this is a useful skill in current and potentially future CompTIA objectives. Very good. Thank you, Scott. Posted in the back channel at uh, 1458, the uh, tutorial link. All right, so I covered all this ground. I covered my DHCP. Now, here's a potential problem for us. I just bought an off the rack Soho router. It's got a DHCP server in it. It has certain defaults. One of the defaults is uh, its IP address. It's probably something like 192.168.1.1 or 192.168.0.1. That covers about 90% of all common brand name routers in existence. When you connect to your internet service provider, it has a DHCP server that's going to send some information down to your router, including one or two DNS servers. If you're with Comcast, like I am, you get two DNS servers in the list, 75.75.76.76, .76 something like that. 76, 76, 75, 75, whatever, and another one that's very similar. Now, what if I don't want to use that? I don't want to use Comcast DNS servers for all kinds of reasons that we've talked about in DNS presentations. I can do that today. I would rather have uh, use a public DNS server out there that may or may not have the same criteria that I'm trying to avoid 
from my ISP. So Google's got one, they have two, uh, at 8.8.8.8 and 8.8.4.4. Well, you can set that up as static values in your Windows machine, your Mac machine, your Linux machine. So even though DNA, DHCP is going to pass that information on to you, your machine will ignore it. No, no, my administrator set up static values here so I can ignore them or I can append them. Some, uh, some clients will do that. So that's kind of the, the really cool point here. I can use features that I want out of a DHCP server if I like. Maybe I'm happy with the DNS server they're going to send down. Maybe I'm happy with the default gateway that it's going to send down. But I'm not happy with the IP address that it's going to give me. So I'll make that static. All of these things are capable in all of the major client platforms, Windows, Mac, and Linux. When you set a static IP address, there is a risk. And that risk is that it becomes a duplicate of another one somewhere on your network. And that manifests in two possible ways, two common ways. One, let's say you've got a scope in your DHCP server, 192.168.1.2, remember, because one is probably taken up by the router, through 192.168.1.254. Well, now you set a, you pick a host on your network and you make it 192.168.1.100. There is nothing that stops your DHCP server at, at this point from also assigning some other host 100. And when two hosts get together and they find out they've got a duplicate IP address, uh, all kinds of things can happen. One works, but the other doesn't. The other works, but the one doesn't. Neither of them work. And that's what I've always taught over the years until three months ago when I that happened. I, I didn't do it, but it happened on my machine. Brought my entire network down for a day and a half, and it took a full week to clean it all up and, and figure out what happened and how it happened. So there's a couple ways to fix that. One is you can do a thing in a DHCP server called a reservation. You can say, hey, if this MAC address comes up, always give it this IP address. It's doable. It's a Band-Aid. It's considered uh, poor administration. It's considered uh, an, a not best practice fine in your house, but you will not see that done ever in a corporate environment. We don't do reservations in a, a corporate or an enterprise environment. So the other possibility then is to create a scope that is not the entire list of every possible IP address on your network. And that means there's three ways you could do that. You could set a scope that occupies the first portion of network addresses, of, of IP host addresses, and leave the last chunk, half, whatever you like, unassigned and use that range for statics. You could do that in reverse. I'll make static addresses with things that end from dot two to dot 100, and I'll let the DHCP scope issue addresses from 101 to 254. Or here's what I do. Um, I have my pool broken up into three parts. Dot one is already taken up. I let one through uh, 100, one through 99 actually, two through 99 is not as part of the DHCP scope. I can do anything I want with them. And then I make a scope from 100 to 175. That takes care of all of the items in my house that I want to have DHCP assigned addresses and that still leaves plenty of room left over. And then from 176 on through 254, those are also unassigned. And then what I do with those is the first batch of unassigns I use to uh, create static IP addresses for permanent server type boxes that will not change, should not change with any kind of frequency in my home. So the uh, pi r square dot zapto dot pi server, that is on uh, a static address that's within that first portion of unassigned addresses in the scope. Uh, same for my print server, same for uh, some of the other servers that I run here in-house. And then the back half of unassigned, I use that pool for static IP addresses for temporary projects. I'm going to experiment with a server 
that I want to do as a project. I'll give it a static while I do the experimenting and then pff, I'll evaporate it because I'm done with that thing. Get the idea. So there's all kinds of ways to manage your scope. Whatever is not assignable, assigned in the pool, in the scope, you can use for static IP addresses. Now I said there are two ways that you can have a duplicate static IP address. One is if you do a static IP address, that's the same as a value that's in the scope of a DHCP server. The other is if you just blow it and you manually assign one dot 100 and you forget and you manually assign another dot 100. So rule number two about making static IP addresses, log them, have it where you can look them up and, and find out what you did where and makes it easier to troubleshoot them later makes it easier to find them later because it's great when you do one or two, but when you start experimenting to the degree that many of you folks are doing, uh, it's easy to forget, especially when you're doing multiple statics in a single box. Okay, that's my backgrounder. Now let's get into learning about the addresses and settings of our systems and then changing them at will. So let me share a, a Pi with you. I'm just going to pick one at random here. That one's running. How about this one? Is there any reason not to use him? Nah, he's a, we do experiments with him all the time. Oops, <laughs> put the wrong password in. Raspberry. S-P-B-E-R-R-Y. There we go. Okay, let me share that with you. This one's already a full screen share, so should come up just lovely. All right, so I want to know the settings of my Raspberry Pi. Now, if I've got a keyboard and a monitor hooked up to it, I can just sit down at the keyboard and watch it on the monitor. If not, I'm going to access it remotely either with a PuTTY or some other SSH client or maybe VNC, but of course you've got to know its IP address before you do that. And you're gonna to have to find that out by, well, there's a couple of ways. You may not need to know the IP address. If you have a standard uh, network set up with a, an off the shelf Soho router that's got defaults, you should be able to get to your uh, Raspberry Pi by calling it the name of the server. In this case, it's drama. You can see that here, drama. So I'll go into a browser or into a ping utility or into putty and just put in drama.local. Dot local is a default uh, private domain name that's built into most Soho routers. Otherwise, if, if that doesn't work, then use any of the common popular IP scanners like advanced IP scanner. It's downloadable. Just look it up with Google. We've done it in a million episodes. Angry IP scanner, Nmap, Zenmap for Windows. You get it. But somehow I found myself at a prompt sitting at a Raspberry Pi, and I want to learn a couple of important factoids about it. Yeah, which ones? Check notes. Oh, yeah. So if you look at the tutorial, um, they talk about, first of all, trying to figure out the name of the host. I know it because I'm looking at the word drama here, but uh, I can change this prompt, and so the host name doesn't appear here. So what the tutorial tells you to do is to type in host name space minus, stop it, capital I. And that really doesn't do anything for you. It tells me there's two IP addresses associated with this thing. Uh, so their tutorial is a little bit wrong if you just do host name. All right, so now I, with both those two little factoids, I know all the IP addresses that are on all the interfaces of this computer. I got a 140 and a 101 and the actual name of it. So, okay, that's useful stuff. And then they give you on the tutorial, um, well, here, let me just show it to you. Uh, IP space R. IP is the replacement for the old IF config command that still works, but my, the R flag only works with IP. So IPR, and this will tell me a little bit more information about my computer. In, in particular, 
What's the default gateway? Which network interface will get me there? What's the IP address of that network interface? And which of them, if I have multiple network interfaces, is the default? So, okay, by default, I can get to 192.168.1.1 by either going through .1.140 or .1.101. And notice this is in a router class. We do this in another day. I've not done a router class in here. There's a metric here, 202, 303, whichever has the smaller number is the preferred route. Now, what they tell you to do on that tutorial is to route this through grep and look for the word default. Okay. So now if that had hundreds of lines, if I was looking for this in a real router or something like that, that might be useful for me, but IPR works just fine. Uh, was there anything else useful that I wanted there? Let me check something. I didn't make notes, but it dawned on me that there might be something. No, there is not. Okay, cool. Now, the next thing I want to know is what is which domain DNS server is my system making calls to? I left this one at the default. Um, and there's a couple ways to find out. I can do IP space A. And it's buried within here. Let's just go with that. Uh, but more importantly, I don't want to know necessarily what it is. I want to know why it is what it is. And that's where we get a little bit more fun. There is a file in Debian distros of Linux where your computer learns its uh, preferred DNS servers. Now, if we don't set them statically, they're going to come from a DHCP server. But if they're going to get set manually, statically somehow. Let me do this. Go over here, clear. And paste in a command. Okay, there's a file in the Etsy folder called resolve.conf. And since I'm not there right now in that folder, I'm gonna run it with sudo. And so, hey, take a look at this. It says, the target ideal uh, preferred name server, DNS server is 192.168.1.201. And the backup is 1.1. Well, 201 is my pie hole because I have been experimenting with this. Or I, I set this one up a while back. This one isn't a default install. It's an old uh, buster install that's been upgraded to bullseye. So this thing is always getting its DNS resolutions by calling first my pie hole. And if my pie hole is not available, it will call the my default gateway, which in turn will call whatever DNS servers have been assigned to it by the ISP. All right, so that's how I know my default gateway, my IP addresses, my host name, and my, my default uh, subnet masks were in there. I didn't uh, look at that. And my list of DNS servers. And since I have an entry in resolve.conf, that will tell it to ignore anything that comes over DHCP. Cool. So now all we've got to do is figure out how to make changes to these things. The change in resolve.conf is obviously pretty easy. All you have to do is do a line. Okay, so now it's in a, a domain called local, which is dot local. You could change that domain to something else, but it wouldn't be able to talk to anybody on dot local. And then do an entry. This is unlike Windows. Windows will let you have three, I think three uh, domain servers in order of preference. There's no limit to how many you can put in. There's probably some practical limit like 255 or something. But if you want to make this my primary, this my backup, another name server and an IP address for a, a secondary backup and so on, you could do this all day long. Name server followed by the IP address of some DNS server that makes you happy. Won't work by the way, until we reboot or until we cause it to reset. I'll show you how to do that shortly. <clears throat> so 
So you did that, did that, did that, did that, did that, did that, did that. Hey, we're just jamming along. Different is uh, okay. Different files. All right. Let's just get right into the meat of it. In Raspberry Pi OS, if you're using the graphical, if you've got a desktop version, there's two ways to do this. You may have set up a, a system that doesn't have the graphical version, then you'll just use method number two. So up here in the upper right-hand corner, notice that I have a wireless symbol of connection here. And if I let my mouse float over that, you can see that it says each zero is configured to be 192.168.1.140 and WLAN zero, wireless LAN zero, is associated with an SSID called ABD as the initials of the people who live in this house. And it's got an IP address. Now I can't tell by looking at that, if that came from a static IP address assignment or from a DHCP server. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna right click on this. And then up here in the top of the resulting context menu is manage my wireless and wired network settings. So I'll click on that. And here I get to my management interface. Need that a little bit higher. Okay, which interface do you wanna manage? If it's a physical card, you do interface. If it's a wireless card, you pick SSID. So let's stick with interface here. And then, okay, which interface do you want? ETH0 or WLAN0? ETH0, please. And you can see I've got this automatically configured empty options. So anything that I don't fill in here comes from DHCP, gets filled in. But if I put in, an IP address here, 192, 168, 1 dot, I don't know, 27. And I hit the apply and close, I'll be fine until I reboot the machine or reset my network settings. Then its IP address is gonna change. And if I'm used to accessing this at dot 140, which I usually am, or dot 101, then I've got to go change the utilities that refer to that. So I'll clear that. And of course you can do the same thing here. Manage your wireless networks. First of all, define what SSID you want to pick and then make any settings here that you don't want to come from DHCP. Then you can go in and make specific settings on your wireless LAN. So interesting, easy stuff. And when you do this, all of the appropriate files get filled in. But again, they don't take effect until you reboot or until you cause them to reset. And that's really what today's presentation is about. What are the files that we've got to mess with? What goes in there? And it's really, really easy. So there is a file, and let me just show you this here. in the Etsy folder called dhcpcd.com. Depending on what you put in here will determine if your system is a DHCP client, if it's a partial client and partial static or full static. So let's take a look in that file. All of these blue lines are commented out. They start with a pound sign. And that's a, a standard for Linux. And then here's one, inform the DHCP server of our host name. So when this thing calls DHCP and DHCP says, I got you, I got your MAC address. Here's some information for you. He'll say, okay, hey, by the way, in case you are a DDNS server or in case you are a, a DNS server, here's my host name. Same goes for client IDs. I'll get into that in another class don't care about that for the moment. Should we try to recall MAC addresses and IP address associations? Yes, and these are all defaults. I haven't messed with this configuration file manually because I just picked this server at random when we got started. So let me get down to the ones I want. Okay, down here. This is the area where you wanna mess with changing you, uh, from a DHCP address to a manual address. Now you could pull the 
uh, comment out of here and start manually editing that thing. Uh, that kind of freaks my sense of, of uh, obsessive compulsiveness out because I don't want to lose anything that was originally there. So what I would do and what I do do is I mark all of this and copy it. Control, copy, right click copy. And then I go down to the bottom of the file, throw a couple enter keys in there and paste that. And then this is where I'm gonna make the actual live changes. So here I'm gonna make an IP static adjust setting on interface ETH0. That's a standard nomenclature for Linux, <clears throat> excuse me, first ethernet card and the static ip address will be whatever it's going to be 107 let's say and if you want to set a static ip v6 address you can do that oh by the way we set the uh, the subnet mask here it's a WAC 24 what do you want your default gateway to be i'd like it to be 1.1 .1, please what do you want your list of DNS servers to be, well, I like my pie hole to be number one. And okay, I like this, the backup is a Google server. Nah, how about the quad nine server? 9.9.9.9. There's also 1.1.1.1 out there. 1.1.0.0, something like that. Uh, yeah, well, okay, so we'll have a list of three in here. And here's an IPv6. DNS server that it seems to know of itself. Okay. And then we would save that with control X. You'd say, yes, I'm not going to say yes. Because I don't want those settings to be there. All right. So now we've made the settings that we want them to be. Now all you got to do is get them to take effect. And there are two ways for them to take effect. One is to reboot your computer. You could do something like sudo reboot. And if you do that, in one minute, it'll reboot. We can make it happen quicker by saying sudo reboot, no wall. That means don't send a message out to all the people that are logged in here that says, hey, we're going to reboot in one minute. And you can put a, a time zero, minus T zero. Do it immediately. Or you could go to your old friend, the Raspberry application icon, go to shutdown and select reboot, or you could shut it down and manually reboot it. Logging out will not change the settings, but I want something a little bit more useful, a little bit more practical. I don't wanna wait for it to reboot and I don't wanna lose my connection. I may have other programs running. So the reboot, this is not in the uh, tutorial that's posted. This only comes from me. Oh, by the way, th I went through that exercise to show you this file, dhcpcd.conf, on purpose. There is a similar file with very similar looking entries in there that gets auto created every time, or auto filled in every time the Pi reboots with the settings that it's decided to use, the ones that it got from DHCP or partial DHCP, partial static or full static, whatever, those settings have to go in here. And then when it boots up and the settings take effect, then they will go into this other file. I'm not even gonna give you the name. I want you to know that the file you want to edit to make permanent changes is this one, Etsy, WAC, DHCPCD.com. There's a trillion tutorials out there that try to tell you to change a different file. And you may do that in other Linux distros, but in Debian-based distros, this is the one. All right, so the other way to do this is, come here you, this command. Sorry, I'm copying and pasting here. This is two commands done together on a single command line. You gotta do it that way, and here's why. The two commands, are sudo if down eth0. Now, if I were to hit the enter key on just that command, 
that would shut down my Ethernet card in my Raspberry Pi and I would lose connection with it, which I'm going to do if I do this remotely anyways. However, if I were sitting at my screen and keyboard, I could bring it back up by doing sudo if up, if is interface, eth0. You can change these eth zeros to your wlan0 or eth1 or eth whatever, wlan. But by doing this together on a single command and joining them with double ampersand, that means do this, then do that. I'll break connection, but it'll reset in just that quick and it'll rebring up the if interface and it'll read the DHCP cd.conf file, apply the new settings. And if I made a change to it, I'll still lose connection because I'm going to have to change the IP address that I'm connected to. You get the idea, but that's it. That's how you set a static IP address and various other static values, your default gateway, your DNS servers, and so forth in Raspberry Pi and just about any other Linux distro. Stand by, closing things down. There we go. All right, did I have anything else in my notes here that I want to talk about? No, here endeth the lesson, says Sean Connery. So let me take a look at questions that have popped up. It's 26, and then after that, let's see if we can't give us away a voucher or a vulture. All right, where, okay, I didn't super scroll, so I left it off where I left off. I'm at 250, give or take. It's going to super scroll as soon as I move this mouse. Oh, yeah, no, I've learned that lesson. I don't want to do that. 250. All right, reading questions here. I tease out of love. <laughs> And Scott, and tell what we're talking to the other back then. David Mueller is here. Greetings, David Mueller. Having never used a Pi, what would you say is a solid go-to to get started? Uh, 3B plus, 4B with one gig, uh, 4B plus, 4B with two gigs. That'll run you anywhere from 35 to 45 bucks, plus an enclosure, a power supply, and a micro SD card. So what, 65 bucks? would probably be on the high side for most of them. A power supply costs you 10 bucks. A cheap micro SD card to get started is five to 10 bucks. Uh, you can buy really cheap 64 gigs for five bucks, but they're gonna be very slow. And you can get enclosures. I, uh, during Black Friday sales, there was enclosures for 99 cents. I bought a bunch of them, uh, but they they run five to 10 bucks, except for the really fancy ones that do awesome things. Uh, or hang around, watch my show long enough. Every now and again, I give away a Raspberry Pi when I find a good excuse and the boss gives me money. <laughs> I have a question, says Abu Bakr al Haj. I couldn't understand this dism. Okay, so this dism. What I'm looking for is to see if you posted a particular dism. And I don't see one, so I, I gather you just want to know about dism in general. I see the back channel typing something that looks like they're going to explain it to me. So let's take a look at that. You answered it. Okay. Dism answered. Got you covered. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Everybody who was involved in that, I'll probably see it as I roll down here further. Dism is a Windows image repair, not just a repair tool. It's, it's also a uh, an installation tool. I do, uh, I make installations of various machines that we want duplicated almost totally, but not totally. And then I use Dimage to take Dism to take that image and save it as a file. And then on the next computer, I use Dism to take that file and put the image on the new computer. So it doesn't just repair, it can totally replace. Okay, Andre is talking with David Mueller answering questions. SSC scan now is my friend, you bet. Love SSC scan now. Okay, and Scott posted our tutorial at 257. But you want the one at pi r square, P I R S Q U A R E dot zapto.org, because it's got way more information. 
Uh, David Miller, z -z 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 -z, reading questions, everybody's answering other people's questions, and that's fine. I appreciate that. You can add hats to expand possibilities. The Pi will stay the same. So, right, you can't upgrade the CPU, you can't upgrade RAM. It's a, a fixed box. Do I have one that's open here that I can get at right quick? The answer to that is yes ish. Power supply, wall wart, five volts, between two and a half and three amps, depending on which version you want. This is mostly set up. This was one that I gave to somebody and then I took it back and gave them a better one. But they all look very similar. Not perfect, but pretty close. All right, so here's your typical Raspberry Pi. The modern ones have four USB ports. This is a four, I can tell because it's got uh, a pair of USB three ports in it and a pair of uh, older twos. You can also tell because it has a pair of micro HDMI ports on there. Uh, here's the CPU, here's the RAM, and over here is the IO controller chip. So that's all soldered on, none of that can be changed. Uh, here you got 40 pins that you can add circuitry to. There's another four pins here that you can add a power uh, over ethernet interface. And you can see quite literally, smaller than a deck of cards, a little bigger than a business card. And the base model of this one, one gig, they've repriced recently, they reintroduced it recently. It's uh, 35 bucks and the two gig version is 45 bucks. The eight gig version, 75 bucks. So you need a compelling reason to buy that. I bought one because I finally was able to buy one. <laughs> Ulysses Ferrar is here. Nice to see you, Ulysses. Another one of our winners in the past. Just your DHCP scope. Keep everything with static IP outside that scope. Thanks for summarizing my 22 minute presentation in two sentences, Andre. <laughs> At home, I use DHCP, no static at all. God, I can't believe I read that out loud. Yes, Tullowit has an FM household. <laughs> oh, let's see. People answering questions here. Dave Mueller, I've seen a few dramas, but they were mostly beyond my... You know what? You can do every one of these things. You really can, especially if you start at the beginning. Uh, catch the, the first five or six episodes, and you'll get the foundations down. And then everything else you can just do by follow along because those will lay down the pieces that you need. Reading questions. Uh, more lyrics. That's how I started on Pi, David Mueller. Right. Andre knew nothing about uh, how he couldn't dress himself before he started watching the AMAs and drama. But now he's, he's a fully functional human able to dress himself and other people. It's amazing. <laughs> Uh, the S3, yes, the, the micro SD card is your storage device. You can also use USB-based storage devices, flash drives, external hard drives, external SSDs, external uh, M2s, but obviously a very cheap way to go with a micro SD. Lots of manuals, lots of how-tos, right. Loads, not lots. <laughs> Passing 307, Andre is talking to David. Also possible to set up an actual hard drive using USB, right? We've talked about how to do that in one of the episodes. Uh, if you look through my index of archives, you'll see uh, all the topics and, and products that we've done. And I can, if, if you write me and say, which episode did you do hard drives on? Uh, send it to davear at totalsend.com. I will send you back an answer, uh, a link to it. There is no dislike button for any YouTube video anymore since YT removed it. Yeah. What's the problem there? Are you, are you disliking my show? You can just make comments about it. And then Andrew and or Scott will ban you because they, I, you know, I'm looking at the image. I'm very washed out. Sorry. Making some changes in lighting here. There is no, okay. I did that. Swish, swash, swoosh. I, still, I have thumbs down button, but I never use it. Yeah, you can do that. have an add-on that reveals this. Oh, that's in uh, 
Discord, right? Andre, question from Discord. If I pass network plus 007 and security 601 before 007 retires, will my 007 renew to 008? What will happen is whatever you have current will renew for the following three years. So you don't get a, uh, a 007 certification. You don't get a 008 certification. You get network plus certified so if your net plus whatever version you have today is not expired and you pass 601 today your network plus certification will renew for three years it'll have the same expiration date as your newly passed 601 same thing would happen if you had a current a plus if you have a plus and you pass net plus a plus renews if you have a plus and you pass sec plus a plus renews you get the idea Raymond Quick is here. Oh, wait a minute. Am I missing anything here? I slid past that. I think you got to pass the same exam twice to renew everything. No, you don't. So what you kind of want to have, I need the buy. Sorry, I'm parsing. So you kind of want to have a need to buy or build the pie around it. Well, yeah, but, you know, define need. I need to learn Linux. I need to... Uh, have a pie hole. I need to uh, play with electronic circuits. <laughs> so need is very subjective. But yeah, project goes a long way. And you know, if, if you have something that you like to do, I, I want to learn Kali Linux. I want to learn pen testing. You can do that on a Raspberry Pi. And the really cool thing about it all is, let's say you just built a pie hole because you wanted to build a pie hole and learn about it. And now you're done with that, but I, I want to use it later. Cool. Shut it down, pull the micro SD card, put a label on it, it says pie hole, today's date. And now pop in another blank thing and install RetroPie and play with that for a while and pull that out. And pretty soon you get a library of things that you can plug in and boot up. That's better than virtual machines, almost. <laughs> Yeah, I do read the joke sometimes too late. I should definitely read ahead. Raymond Quick. Hey, I finally got my camera check program done. One of our automation guys joked I should learn enough PHP to make a web portal dashboard to show offline cameras. That confused me. I was really good up until the last three words. But sure, if you can show offline cameras with PHP, more power to you. Uh, where are we at here? 37. Cool. Another couple minutes on these questions, another minute or two, and then uh, let's give stuff away. <laughs> oh, are we going to do the whole Asia album? Love Asia. Uh, extension browser restored, just like counts works great. Teach me about that in Discord, Tullowit. I, I, I'm curious there, and I'm not fully understanding the scope of what you're saying. Raymond Quick, I've used my Pi to help learn Linux, server admin, Python, next is PHP, ditto here. I was a, a Linux user uh, from a billion years ago uh, and then dropped it for years. And then when uh, the Pi came around, I got re-immersed and mm, I am just eating it up. And all done on Pi's, right, ditto here. And I've, I've, I've restored some of my electronics skills, my one of my degrees is electrical engineering. And uh, I'd done almost nothing of that uh, after the first couple of years I got out of school. I, I worked as a, an electrical engineer for companies, but then that faded and I became a, a network guy and a, an instructor and dabble in it. But now that Pi's back, I, I do a lot more and it's all coming back. Build a retro Pi. Oh man, yeah, we just did the retro Pi episode two, three episodes ago. Man, that's fun. I, I'm running just shy of 5,000 games on my RetroPie, and it is my total brain break these days. Reading questions, getting to the end. <laughs> yeah, Mario Brothers all over the place. My kid likes Super Mario Brothers. Yeah, that would be the one who's a senior in college, still breaking out 8-bit Super Mario Brothers. <laughs> program check for cameras that have gone oh okay i understand gotcha piece of pie you can do that easily in php 
All right, that's it. I saw an Altoids thing. Turn, yeah, lots of people put Res Pies in and Altoids. Remember, Altoids is a metal interior. You got to get some insulation uh, so that you don't short out your pie. It goes a quick thirty-five bucks. Hey, well, I am ready to talk about a giveaway. I'm going to put the answer in the back channel right now. And then let's talk giveaway for a minute or two, and then let's do giveaway for a minute or two. So we have a giveaway. It's not ours. CompTIA is not, or Total Seminars does not own this, and we're not the ones giving it away. We are the vehicle by which CompTIA is providing CompTIA test vouchers to people who participate in Mike's AMAs and my drama. And we are very grateful to them. It's, it's a wonderful program. We haven't heard anything about it ending. It's smoothing out as time goes by. People are getting their vouchers very quickly. By the way, if you win a voucher today and need your email today, I send it out tonight. They act on it on Monday morning. So uh, that means the, the folks who won this past Monday and this past Wednesday, theirs hasn't been sent yet. They're waiting for you to send yours today. So good luck on that. All right. Today's contest for CompTIA voucher, good at any CompTIA, for any CompTIA exam except CYSA, anywhere that CompTIA exams are offered in the world. Uh, what will happen is we're going to give you a list of information for you to send to me, Dave R at totalsem.com. You send that info to me. I will format it appropriately, make sure all the information that's needed is there, and then I will send it along with the other this week's winners to CompTIA and they will get it next, on Monday morning when they get in the office and start working on it. I am presuming that they're in the office this coming week. I make no such presumption for the following two weeks after that. So uh, anything can happen here. There may be a little bit of delay as the holiday seasons are upon us, but they will get them and they do react pretty quickly these days. All right, contest rules. No previous winners of vouchers on my show. Mike has a larger contingent of uh, people, and so it's, it may be more possible for them to do it, but if you want a voucher in Mike's show or on my show, you can't win today. You can still participate in the contest, just put the word pass. Today's contest will be a random number. You can only submit one number. If you submit more than one number, the first one is the one that I'm going to take. The other ones will be ignored. I don't want to eliminate you. Uh, let's see, no previous winners. We make it as fair as possible. I do that with by using a random number in a particular range, if by some reason two people would come up with the same number, uh, it's the one that shows up on my screen first. Even if it's yours shows up on your screen first, it's mine that matters, right? I'm human. I make mistakes. If I make a mistake, we go with it. There's no do-overs. There's no appeal. So guys in the back channel, if you would have the, uh, the winner announcement ready to go once we've selected one, that would be great. Disclaimer, yeah, we're, we're past that stuff. All right, so I'm using a pseudo random number generator. Uh, today I am generating a number between, I have generated a number between 200 and 600. Start typing in your numbers closest to without going over will win today. How many people we got watching this show right now? Let me see. 15. Oh, your odds are good because I think at least five or six of them have already won and three of us are employees. We can't win. <laughs> Give me a random number between 200 and 600 closest to without going over wins. Oh, here they come. <laughs> Should we stop, Scott? <laughs> I think think i think that he already won one let me check my notes here somebody got the exact number but that doesn't mean you should or shouldn't try let me see here i'll be darned he did not win oh wait no no that's the wrong list let me check this file wrong file He won. Already won.
Yeah, it's been a couple of months too. All right. Uh, let me get back here. Now let's keep this up there for looking up next winter. So next closest one or next dead match. I'll tell you who you are when we get done. You'll know. Okay. All right. Which one do you see as the first? We're going to close this thing off. Uh, where uh, at 3:44, where Tullowit posted, Dave's making a list. That's the cutoff point. Uh, okay, I see the two that you see, and I see. And we already checked this one. Let me make a note here. You guys can go ahead and post the instructions. Yes, that's why I see it as well. Back channel. Let me go update the important thing here. I got two files that have to be changed before I do announcements. Sorry, I apologize for the delay. It was this. And the guess was this. And the winner was this. Save it. Okay. We have a winner. And the random number, you're not going to believe this. One of you actually had this number dead on, but you've already won a voucher. Sorry, man. My number was 555, 555. That's what the random number generator came up with it. We had two people come up with the same number that we're closest to without going over. Uh, Swish Swash was one, and Matt Ireland was the other. Swish, I got you first in my handy-dandy list. So you have won a CompTIA voucher for anywhere in the world down here at the bot at time 345. Scott has posted the instructions on what you need to do. I'm also going to put that up as a slide. Stand by. Voucher winner right here. Make it full screen. Because I want to talk about this for a second. And we got plenty of time. Share this screen. All right. So you're going to send an email to me swish swash at davar at totalsem.com identify your actual name and your youtube name swish swash put your first name and your last name more if you have more than that put your email address in the body of the email i can't use the one from the header and if you've used if you've registered for comptia exams before use the same email and name that you used when you registered in the past. Identify exactly specifically by number which exam you want to take. If you want to take A plus core one, that's 220-1001. Or core two, 220-1002. We got uh, same thing for net plus, sec plus, SY0. Uh, so look it up, make sure you got it right. Tell me the country that you're going to take the exam in. And if the country is the US, you must also include the state. That's the email that I need. Please send that to me today, and I will be able to send off all of this week's winners to CompTIA tonight. Sweet and slamming. All right, let me check here, see if my slides, if there's anything that I missed that I need to share with you. We did that. I did this. We did that. We did this. Oh, my goodness. I got through all the slides. Very nice. All right, how we got here? We got 12 minutes left of showtime. Let's see what's up in final comments and questions. <clears throat> Excuse me. All right, congratulations, swish swash, swish swash. So what do I do? You look at the timestamp at 345 and you look at the slide that I just talked about in detail and off you go. I know, unbelievable, Andre. If we were doing duplicates, you'd have one. And there will come a time when we do duplicates, but that time will be when I have uh, everybody, <laughs> everybody's already won on here. Then we'll start going back and recycling. All right, reading messages here. All right, uh, specials have been reposted at 348. We put those up earlier. Uh, we got total tester and ebook bundles for A, Net, Sec, CYSA, and others. Use the code. Go to totalsem.com, put those products in your shopping cart. And then when you check out, use the code RECORD, R-E-C-O-R-D. 
uppercase, lowercase, initial caps, they all work. And those are the only ones that work. Don't try and mix case and get creative. Uh, I tell you what, while we're at it, let's repost the Discord link because we're going there afterward as well. So does uh, Andre, he's got it. You're very welcome, Swish Swash. Congratulations. Uh, Andre, I'm fine, Dave. <laughs> Don't have time to be studying for another zero at the moment anyway. Sounds good. Well, they're good for a year from the time they issue them. So you could take that time. All right, Discord link. So uh, I'm going to be on Discord afterwards. So are a number of the folks here, possibly uh, some of our back channel folks. We'll be on with mics and cameras. Join us with mics and cameras if you like. Just come on and do text if you like. We can talk about anything that makes you happy from today's show. Um, we have a lot more broad range in topics there. I think some of the, the folks are willing to get into religion and politics, not my neck of the woods. So Scott posted uh, the Discord invite link at 349. If you ever use a Discord link to uh, the unofficial Discord channel, uh, the unofficial Total Seminars Discord channel, uh, just click harder, click it again, uh, look around the page until you find the thing that says it's it's retired, continue anyways, and you will get in. Hey, my pleasure, Muhammad. We will see you again. Uh, Mike's doing his regular show on Monday. No, uh, no features that I'm aware of. Did you see Mike and Scott and Dr. James Stanger on the Wednesday show? If you didn't, two things. Don't miss the next time Dr. Stanger comes on. He is interesting. He's fun. He is the core of knowledge at CompTIA. So people ask him CompTIA questions all the time. Oh, my printer just turned on. I was wondering what that buzz was. Uh, it, it went into hibernate. Uh, and again, if you haven't seen this show, uh, the plan was for him to do a presentation on the next generation of networking, edge routing, and things like that. But so many questions came in that we just devoted, Scott and Mike and, and him, devoted the entire show to answering questions. And we learned some really useful and important stuff. And uh, it, just don't miss his next appearance. It was awesome. And it always is. And Mike had some particular ideas that he wanted to uh, talk about with Dr. Sanger on the next show. I don't know where we're going to get back to uh, the networking next generation we've got to it's good stuff and coming from james he's so interesting uh but do uh watch that uh, show from wednesday on the archive it's great it's wonderful i should put that link up i will because i have time and interest and it's close oh what is that that's 2021 stanger Okay, here's the link for that. Let's make sure that's the right date. Yeah, 12 8. Okay. Let's do it this way. Okay, I got a link. Here we go. Posting a link from the Wednesday archive show. It fit Mike Myers live QA with Dr. James Stanger joins mike and scott was there too and uh man the three of them together what a what a great show okay tolowit can be on discord for a bit good we're looking forward to that andre will be there if you missed some of it go back jack oh god i can't believe i read your stuff without reading it first oh man thank you andre if wednesday was great uh it's i can close that yay Lots of things I can do. All right, well, let's wind things up here then. Um, I'm going to do my show on uh, next Friday, the 17th, and then we'll figure out what's going to happen for the last two Fridays of the year. Uh, what are we going to do on the show next week? I'm glad you ask. Uh, iMagic. Let me see if I've got the, the spelling and the pronunciation right on that. Uh, I've got a part two of our motion sensor thing, but as, as I close out my work year, I have just a ton to accomplish. So I'm not doing that probably till uh, early next year. Let me go to my notes here. I've, I've changed things around. All right, where's the eye magic thing? There it is. Oh, and the other piece I'm going to need. Uh, okay, that's magic uh, with a K. A K. Uh, it's a graphic manipulator program. A lot of fun available for every version of Linux. It's useful. 
All right, how are we looking there? We're looking pretty good. All right, anything else pop up for the last couple micro moments? <laughs> and we're going to do Metallica stuff. All right, well, let's wind this thing up then. A little bit early today, no big deal. It's six minutes left in the show, and we accomplished everything, excuse me, that we wanted to accomplish. So this has been Dave Rush. I'm the senior instructor at Total Seminars and resident pie specialist. I wish you a great weekend. Take care of each other. Take serious steps to stay healthy. Call and visit your parents and the rest of your family. And never forget, technology is great, but the greatest resources we have are you and I. So with that, good night. I'll see you on Discord and at the AMAs next week. And with that, oh my gosh, what the heck just happened here? Ah! I can't do, I am out of here. The wrong screen popped up, you goober. There we go. So with that, I am out of here.